Okay, so heading into a bye week, I want to talk about just how absurd Jalen Hurts' start to the season has been and all that's coming up after the bumper. What do you mean you don't subscribe to my son's YouTube channel? Mama, no! Just snap the damn ball, RJ. What's up, kinfolk? It's RJ Young. I am not on a step mill. Consider hitting the like and subscribe button because I upload a video every single day. It's always OU related, college football related, sports related. We have a good time. And today, I wrote this, this short thing about just how absurd Jalen Hurts' start to the season has been. And I kind of couched it into the Heisman conversation because, yeah, everybody wants to talk about the Heisman. And I understand it's a good vehicle to just get at how absurd these numbers are. So you probably saw the social media clip that's floating around. ESPN's Ed Ashoff just asked Jalen Hurts what else they could do. And, man, he, he talked about just what he had done against UCLA, 439 yards <laughs> scrimmage. 289 yards passing, 15 to 20, three TDs, 150 on the ground on 14 attempts with a TD. And then he said, you know, we're not thinking about that rat poison. Can we get the Sa On the one hand, you're like, can we get the Saban out of here? On the other hand, you're like, hey, Saban wins national championships, and this kid won a national championship, so RJ, let him do what he's going to do. Fine, fine. Let the six foot two, 219-pound wonderkin continue to talk trash about his own performance because he's just not going to be happy with what he's been doing. But what he's been doing has been just ridiculous, man. All right, so check it. I wrote this stuff down. Looking at total yardage for what I consider Heisman Trophy contending quarterbacks, that is to say Power 5 quarterbacks with a good enough football team around them to compete to make the college football playoff, right? So at number 5, I got Justin Fields, 771 yards, 13 TDs, he's pretty decent, right? And then you go up from there, Trevor Lawrence, 886 yards, three TDs. This is all over three games, all right? Or eight TDs, not, not, not three, eight TDs for Trevor Lawrence. My bad, I don't want to dock you. Five picks for you too, though. Sam Ellinger, 1,077 yards, 12 TDs, all right? And he's got one really quality opponent in there in LSU that he actually, he passed for over 400 yards against. So kudos to him. Joe Burrow just coming out of, Coming out of last year, just said, hey, this is my team now. We changed the offense. Got Joe Brady up there helping passing game coordinate what we're doing. And all that's meant for him is 1,162 yards with 12 TDs. He threw for 373 on Northwestern State. We all knew that he threw for doggone near 500 against Texas. He's going to be there. And then Jalen Hurts is just, again, absurd. He's nearly nine, no, he's 91 yards ahead of Burrow. 1,253 yards, 13 touchdowns. Bruce Feldman actually had a really great tweet taking a look at just how absurd he's been as it relates to other FBS teams. And, El and Feldman's tweet was to the tune of, check it, this dude has put together more rushing yards than I think it's 11? What did I write down? Okay, yeah. He has scored more touchdowns than 111 FBS teams. And he's amassed more rushing yards than 45. He's averaging 14.4 yards per attempt. And as I've just been astounded, I keep wanting to repeat the stat because I think the stat is awesome. 13 touchdowns means he's got one more touchdown and he throwed incompletions in three games. 12, which is ridiculous. Chip Kelly called him one of the best quarterbacks he's ever faced, naming Kyler Murray and Andrew Luck. And we all know that Andrew Luck is one of those all-timers as a person and as a quarterback coming out of Stanford. Chip Kelly, if nothing else, knows quarterbacks, even if UCLA is trash. And then you looked at the passer efficiency rating, which I really enjoy looking at because it tells us just how good a quarterback is taking care of the ball and doing good things with the ball when it's in the air. So check it. Trevor Lawrence had 156.6 versus Syracuse, and he threw for 395. Had those two picks that I talked about. Or, I didn't talk about it in this segment. I talked about it in another segment. Justin Fields, 169.2 versus Indiana, 14 to 24. All right, 199 yards. Ellinger, 208.7. That's really good versus Rice. All right, really good. Tonga Valoa had a game of games, 227.2 versus South Carolina. Remember, like, the single season record for pass efficiency rating? It was broken by both Kyler Murray and Tua Tonga below. Before that was held by Baker Mayfield. So I had about 200. So anything at 200 or better is really, really good. So taking into account, Jalen Hurts, 245.9 versus UCLA. Just stupid. Just ridiculous. And there's really not real, a good way to put this stuff into perspective. But 
I keep looking at, like, what did other Week 3 opponents do? Because some people play Power 5 teams, some people did not. So, Tonga Valoa, 444 yards with 5 touchdowns on 28 of 36 passing. Outstanding day for him. And a 47-23 of 23 shellacking of South Carolina, who covered. Good on them. Thought I nearly hit the bad button. Then you had Joe Burrow, 373, versus Northwestern State with two touchdowns and a pick. 21-24, though, we're going to take that. 65-14 throttling of Northwestern State. Ellinger, 279, 23 of 27. And Texas is 41-13 win against Rice. And I mentioned Lawrence, 395, 22 of 39 passing, three touchdowns, two picks, 41-6 against Syracuse. And Fields, 199 yards, 14-24 passing. Ohio State's 51-10 beat down of Indiana. Outside of that, it's really Chuba Hubbard, maybe Travis Etienne, but Chuba Hubbard, Jonathan Taylor, he was off this week, he'll be in there. I'm mentioning Chuba Hubbard because I was at Oklahoma State and Tulsa this weekend, watched the OU UCLA on TV like the rest of you, and I watched a dude take the first play from scrimmage 75 yards to the house. I saw Charlie Dickey's offensive line be outstanding against Joe Gillespie's 3-3-5 front, and most people would tell you, you ought to be able to run on a 3-3-5 front, except some of those inside linebackers come down and hit guards in the mouth and they take them over, right? That didn't happen in this game. Hubbard, again, 32, 256 yards. He's got over 500 yards rushing this season. Oklahoma State is going to have to be really good this year for him to win the Heisman. And by really good, I mean knock off Texas this weekend, beat Oklahoma in the Bedlam rivalry game, probably not drop a game, maybe drop a one, get yourself in contention to be in the college football playoff, which is not out of the question. But Spencer Sanders would have to be much better. And Chuba Hubbard has a better opportunity when the Heisman Spencer Sanders actually sucks throwing the ball down the field. And he hadn't had a 300-yard passing game just yet. He struggles against man coverage, which I didn't expect to be the thing. I thought zone might be the thing. But he can't throw guys open. And if you're going to send six and seven at him, he doesn't really know what to do with the ball. So Chuba Hubbard's going to be there. And we know Jonathan Taylor's going to be there. And we also know that Travis Etienne is going to be there. All right. That's it for me. That was just...